What's up, everybody? It's your boy, Mr. Universal Sports. I'm gonna talk about something a little different today, folks. This is my address to the Laker Nation. Now, my name is Mr. Universal Sports, and I do talk about different sports on occasion, but mostly I talk about boxing. But today, we're gonna talk about the Lakers. As you know, the Lakers are not doing so well this season, and I think we're like this. We had the second to the last worst record in the Western Conference, or the worst record in the Western Conference. We're not going to talk about the Eastern Conference. Their, their tank is just way stronger than our tank right now. But before I get into the draft and how we can fix the Lakers, one of the first things I'm going to talk about is which Laker players I think we should keep. As you know, if you're a fanatic like me, we have three players under contract next season. That's Kobe Bryant, Steve Nash, and Robert Scarsay. It's the little no center that we took two years ago. But that's besides the point. But anyway, which player should we keep? Now, I definitely think we have a lot of cat space coming up this summer, but I don't think we should use it. I think we should hold off on that cat space and wait till the summer of 2015 instead of the summer of 2014. Because I think the only decent free agent that's unrestricted that we can get, because let's be honest, we're not getting Eric Bledsoe, that's only, or, or some guy from Boston, Avery, Avery Bradley, we're not getting those type of players because they're just going to resign with their teams and Boston is going to try to keep, is going to keep them and Phoenix is going to try to keep Bledsoe. So, the only two player, the only player that's really top notch is Carmelo Anthony and I was discussing in the barbershop today, they said, we should go after Carmelo Anthony and all that, I'm like, no, Carmelo Anthony will be 30 years old. And you play and Phil Jackson said the realest thing. You play your bass basketball from your ages 28 to 32. After 32, you kind of start declining. I don't want to sign Carmelo Anthony to a five-year deal, and all of a sudden he's we have an old Carmelo Anthony at 35 years old making 22 million dollars a year. I don't want that happen. That's gonna be that's gonna be detrimental to the franchise, and I'll set us back even further. And I don't want that. So. And besides, I think Carmelo Anthony doesn't make his teammates better, and he's definitely shown over the years that he's not a top a top notch player that you want that can make your team better. And he's a good scorer, a stick scorer, and a good face of the franchise. You want to sell jerseys, but he's not the Lakers type of player. Kind of like kind of like the White Howard wasn't the guy, like his mental makeup and stuff like that. He, like I truly believe, and I said this to friends in the bar shot last year. We wasn't gonna, I was against the Dwight Howard trade because this guy's just gonna leave and go to Houston anyway. And he, that's what he did. He didn't want to be in LA. He, of course, he just threw the Lakers in there just to say the Lakers, but he couldn't handle the pressure of being a Laker. And we lost the White Howard, and I think it's for the better because personally, I have Demarcus Cousins has a better center than Dwight Howard, and we can argue about that all day long. Second, I want to talk about is on the this current roster of Lakers. Who do you think we should keep? If I were you to preserve the 2015 cap space, I wouldn't sign anybody to two, three-year deals. I definitely think we should keep Gasol. Sign him to like a one-year, ten million dollar offer or twenty to twelve million dollars. We should keep Nick Young. We should keep Xavier Henry, and we should definitely keep. I know everybody's against this. We should keep Kendall Marshall and let go Jordan Farmer. And the reason why I say this is because we have we seen Jordan Farmer. We seen what he can do. Oh yeah, not the other guy. I think we should keep his bias more. I think he's a he has the potential to be a Trevor Ariza type player for us, who could be a good defender and strong athletic player off the bench. But the only reason why I think we should keep. Kendall Marshall over Jordan Farmer because we had Jordan Farmer before and we know what he can do and I don't think he's going to get any better from from this point on. Well, I think Kendall Marshall is still younger. He's much younger than Jordan Farmer. He's an assist guy. He can, I don't think it's his offense disappears at times, but his assists, but he, he can, when's the last time he had a point guard that gets 9-10 assists a game? The last time I checked was Nick Van Asso back in the early 90s. That's the last time the Lakers had a legitimate point guard was when we had Nick Van Asso. So those are the players I think we should keep. Now, I'm going to bring up this 
2000, this legendary, potentially deep 2014 draft class coming up. Now, the worst pick the Lakers can get, we stand at five right now. Fifth worst record in the NBA. But I think the worst draft pick we can get is number 10. I don't think the league is going to screw us necessarily this time. After, the, after they screwed us in the Chris Paul deal, that's a whole other trade. That's a whole other YouTube video. But I don't think they're going to give us 10. I really think but we're not going to get number one either. Because if the Lakers were to get the number one pick, it would be like people would be screaming conspiracy. You guys are rigging it for the Lakers. So I don't think the Lakers are going to get the number one pick. I think the Lakers are going to get, at the worst, the fifth pick or the third pick. And there's some pretty player. There's some pretty good players that I'm excited about. The first player I'm going to bring up, obviously, is Andrew Wiggins. I think he's a potentially franchise type guy, six foot eight, 220 pounds, could potentially be like a very athletic somebody. And you need that athletic three these days. That seems to be the new trend in the league with LeBron James, Paul George, Kevin Durant, and others. And I think that's that's what we should look towards. That should be number one. That small four swing man spot. Now second, everybody's been saying all year who in college season, who was better, Jabari, Jabari Parker or Andrew Wiggins? Excuse me. Now Jabari Parker, this I'm comparing this to LeBron James and Carmelo Anthony. No, I'm not trying to say that Andrew Wiggins is no. no is LeBron James. I think personally I think LeBron was a man child when he came out of high school at six foot eight, two fifty. But that's another story. But <laughs> anyway, Jabari Parker is a better player now. But I think his upside is limited. I think he'll he'll get a little bit better better, but he'll cap off after his second year and he'll be the player he is. Whereas Wiggins, the sky's the limit. Another analogy I'm gonna bring up is the, the, the two thousand four draft, the White Howard and Omega X before. And I think Orlando had the first pick. Who are they going to select? Jay Billis was saying, Omega Okafor will be your defensive cornerstone center for the next 10 to 12 years. And he's a good rebounder, excellent shot blocker. And he is, until he got hurt. I mean, Okafor is a very serviceable center. It's hard to find serviceable big men today. But Dwight Howard is more athletic and, and potentially the sky's the limit with him. And the Orlando Magic in 2004 selected Dwight Howard, and he's considered the best center in the NBA right now. So I think Orlando made the best pick. Now, if I was, if I had if Wiggins is, let's just say the Lakers are taking AR three, and EB to center and Parker's gone, and if Wiggins is there, I'll take him. Now, the second, if, if we're at number three, if they have the number three pick, I'm projecting project the Lakers going to get the number three pick, and EB's gone and Wiggins is gone. Or Parker and Wiggins are going. I take the center EB. I think they said this guy could be with his footwork, athleticism, and his overall upside. They say he could be the best player in the draft, a potential franchise guy. I, they say he could be a, an large one. Now I know that's blasphemous. I personally have a large one as the greatest center of all time, but I think <laughs> I think that you know he he could be the best set player down the road, and I think if he's available. We should definitely get his health checked out first. We don't want an Andrew Bynum situation. We should de definitely get his health checked out. But I think we should take him at number three is available. Number three on my board will have to be Julius Randle. I think I know everybody's saying in 2015, and I'm going to bring up the 2015 class as my preview in this discussion, that we're going to get Kevin Love in 2015 when he's a free agent, unrestricted free agent. But here's my theory. I, if didn't they just say Hell Freeze is over at number five and Randall's, Julius Randle is available, we take him. And I think he's 6'9", 250. He, he's a beast on the glass. He's a beast on the low post. He has a good, mid, decent mid range game. And also, I think we can use somewhere down the road if we want to, like, they just said we don't. We can use that money elsewhere. They said, you know what? Let's not waste our money on a Kevin Love. We got Julius Randle at power forward. We keep Gasol as a center for a three-year deal and let him retire as a Laker, but I think we should. Now we can use our free agent 2015 money on a point guard, which is a Rondo or I think somebody else is a point guard as a free agent, or a small forward. 
So I think that's what we if that that's the theory if we should do if we were to take Randall. And my last player on my draft board would be the point guard, the Australian point guard is Exum. Dante Exum, the point guard out of Australia. Now this they said this guy has the potential, the second biggest potential in the draft next to E B. He could be a potential franchise guy. And from what I'm seeing, this guy is already in Los Angeles, already working out. Pretty much didn't think the Lakers is working them out under the table, but I'm I'm just speculating. I have no ties to the Lakers or anything. I'm just a I'm just some crazy fan on YouTube. And I think that I'm really excited about this guy. But the only thing I, I don't know about Edson is that he how he does against top notch competition. He mostly played in Australia. Now he did good in the world championships against elite competition, but we don't he hasn't played against that elite competition regularly. But so that's my top five in the draft. Now I'm I'm gonna slightly bring up the 2015 free agency. Obviously, we should the Lakers number one target, and everybody knows this, this is the worst kept secret in the NBA is that Kevin Love wants to be a Laker. I think we should go after Kevin Love in 2015. We shouldn't sign nobody. Forget about Carmelo. Forget about LeBron. In 2014, we should go after. We should aim. Towards the 2015 free agency, where it's better, we can get a Rondo, we can get a Kevin Love, we got Kobe, we got Gasol, got got that top pick, Lakers reloaded, and we got and we got that. We still got those young bench players, and I think the Lakers have one of the better benches in the NBA. Tell me what you guys think. This your boy, Mr. Uniform Sports. How would you fix the Lakers? This is for this discussion is only for NBA fans, but for anybody that can jump in it. This this discussion is for like the massive debate. I'm willing to argue with y'all all day on YouTube or whatever. I'm out. Peace. You have a good Saturday.